Welcome back, everybody. Well, you've probably seen a lot of people wearing pink this month on the football field, pink extensions in people's hair, uh, you name it. There's a lot of pink going around, and that's because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And joining me now to talk a little bit about it is Dr. Colette with the Breast Surgery Experts of Northeast Wisconsin. Good morning. Good to Good see morning. you. Good morning. Dr. Colette and I know each other. I've actually had a mammogram um, by her, and uh, it's not scary. Don't put it off. Uh, so many people, Dr. Collette, seem to be have breast uh, cancer. You hear about it all the time, uh, and including my mother-in-law uh, just is, is now a breast cancer survivor. Oh, she found out she, she was diagnosed about a year ago. It's so, so common. Why is that? Well, there's a couple different reasons, Amy. Um, the most important reason is we're actually doing screening. So we're finding cancers earlier and earlier and can't say enough about getting your mammogram. But it's also because people are living longer. So people aren't dying of heart disease or lung disease or diabetes anymore, and they're living long enough to get a cancer of old age. The next big reason is the baby boomers. If one in eight women get breast cancer, there's just that many more women getting breast cancer. Okay. And then lastly, our treatments are so good, like your mother-in-law, um, they're just living longer because our treatments are good and they're not dying of their disease. The American Cancer Society suggests there's 10 million women out there who are breast cancer survivors now. So survivorship's a big deal. It really is, it's yeah. very cool. In my um, mother-in-law's case, she caught it early. Uh, she is the perfect patient. She goes and gets, uh, you know, uh, checkups and mammograms regularly. Um, they were able to just do a uh, little bit of treatment, the, a little surgery, treatment, yeah. a little radiation. Yes, and exactly. A and nice little pill. Yeah, and, and she's going on a great trip with her girlfriends very soon. I love soon, it, so I love it. It's all good news. So let's talk about the word you use, survivorship. Um, uh, it's, it's really working, as you said. It seems to be, and that survivorship's a funny word because we don't really know what it means. Some people define it differently. The Lance Armstrong Foundation says that it's from the time of diagnosis on that you're a survivor. But most of my patients would say that their survivorship sort of begins at the end of their treatment. And then it's how they actually try to figure out how to deal with their diagnosis. It's a little bit easier if you have a case like your mom's or mother-in-law. It's a little harder if you have the whole chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and it's a more long, uh, longer process. Uh, is there some ongoing research on survivorship? There is. It, because there's so many survivors and so many people out there, it's actually emerging as a new discipline in medicine. We're actually able to track milestones of patients' survivorship, and we're actually able to see what is the usual course. Most importantly, we're, there's no real life skill that tells us, oh, how do you deal with the diagnosis of breast cancer? You actually have to develop that set of skills. So we might use some skills from other transitions in our life, but it's really hard to develop that skill for survivorship. And sometimes we have to teach patients, how do you deal with breast cancer or other cancers? And there's some great groups out there. And yeah. yeah, there's so much out there. It's, it's yeah. amazing. What is this uh, mindfulness? What do you mean by yeah. that? Well, so right now, as we're learning more about survivorship, we're finding out that what our mind tells us to our body, so the mind-body relationship is almost as important as some of the treatments we're doing. So if we can tell ourselves that we're gonna be okay and have positive thoughts and slow down the mind and be able to change our relationship with our mind, we're finding that patients do better. They have greater joy, they have greater gratitude, they feel better, but more importantly, we're finding on a biochemical level, we're changing them from a pro-inflammatory state where you, you might let a cancer cell slip through to an anti-inflammatory state where you'd stave off cancer cells. So actually changing what we think and slowing down and figuring that piece out makes a big difference. Interesting, very yeah, interesting. Yeah. Wow, um, and bottom line, if it's been a while since you've had a mammogram, you've been putting it off, you've put everybody else in your family first, get it done. Get it done, get it done. And then we do have a workshop that's coming up on mindfulness where we can actually teach you the skills for mindfulness. And one more thing, Amy, you were so kind last year to have us come on about our calendar of breast cancer oh, yeah. survivors. We have 12 new women we're gonna feature and we're gonna come back in November and preview those calendars. What a great way to support yeah. the, the person that you know with breast cancer. Just pick up a calendar, exactly, yep. put it Very on your good. desk. Dr. Collette from the Northeast Wisconsin uh, Breast Surgery Experts. And yes. again, to find more on that mindfulness seminar, how can people do that? They call my office, 920-360-3787, and they can sign up. It's once a week for six weeks, but we'll start again in January if they don't want to do this session. All right, All great. right. Thank you very good much. Good to see you. Thank yep. you. Thank you.